Snatcher is a visual novel or graphic adventure game if you prefer, written by Hideo Kojima and developed and published by Konami. It was first released in 1988 on the PC-88 and MSX, which led to a PC Engine CD release a few years later. Snatcher didn't hit our shores until 1994, finding its way onto Sega's underutilized and underappreciated CD-based add-on. The Sega CD was subject to neglect and ridicule by this point, and Sega was too busy coddling their newborn Saturn to even bother, so Kojima's cyberpunk adventure received very little press upon its release and even fewer copies were produced. In spite of this, the game has a devoted cult following and, thanks to its aforementioned rarity, has become a highly coveted title for Sega CD collectors, especially since this is the only console version sporting an English translation. A disc-only copy will easily run you $150 to $200 on eBay, making Snatcher the Eleanor of Sega CD titles. Now, here's the $64,000 question. Is Snatcher on Sega CD worth it? Honestly, I wouldn't know. A loyal fan and friend, otherwise known as Nick, sent me a backup copy as a donation. Nick, this bud's for you. First, here's the setup, as taken from the back of the box. 2047 AD, Neo Kobe City, Japan, a place of madness and decadence. A mysterious bioroid life form has appeared. Its true nature and purpose are unknown. Is it some country's secret weapon or an alien life form from another world? They slay their victims and take their place, earning them the nickname Snatchers. A new police division, Junkers, has been formed. They are trained specifically to combat the Snatchers. Enter the cyberpunk world of Snatchers as Gillian Seed, a new Junker recruit. Use your military special forces training, the latest high-tech weapons, and your android sidekick Metal Gear to hunt down and destroy the Snatchers. As I'm sure any fan of American cinema may have noticed by now, the basic premise and many of the visuals lift a great deal from Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Blade Runner, and The Terminator, so much so that it borders on plagiarism. This really should come as no surprise to fans of Kojima, seeing as how he has been guilty of this on countless occasions throughout his career, most notably with his Metal Gear series. In addition, Snatcher also benefits, or suffers depending on your point of view, from many classic Kojima narrative staples, specifically his fondness for sophomoric and self-referential humor. Metal Gear? That's a pretty weird name. I took his basic design and his name from the Metal Gear Menace of the late 20th century. But uh, quite unlike that Metal Gear, this one was designed for peaceful purposes. Double crosses, convoluted plot twists, and exceptionally long sequences that simply reiterate the proceedings as if you haven't been paying attention or simply too dim to comprehend its cerebral plot. Personally, I have a love-hate relationship with the story. It's well-written and executed, certainly, but because of its familiarity with said films and my own knowledge of Kojima's later work, playing Snatcher now is an enjoyable, though predictable, affair. What really made Snatcher stand out for me were Gillian and Metal Gear. Their partnership, no, friendship, is arguably the most original and entertaining facet of the narrative, and that is what kept me hooked. All their backhanded compliments and quips had me giggling my ass off, which got me right in the guts when they had to part ways toward the end. Ultimately, it was their growing friendship that had me loving Snatcher. That, and I'd be lying if I said the game didn't have some genuinely shocking moments. It's amazing just how gory this game is, considering it was rated T for teen. We have partial nudity, a decapitation, entrails, rotting corpses, and erect nipples. Damn. The gameplay is very reminiscent of a point-and-click adventure, though there's one element in particular that sets it apart. It's compatibility with Konami's Justifier. There are several sequences throughout the game where you have to throw your joypad aside and bust some caps and insectors and snatchers alike. There's a joypad only option, obviously. While this does rob Snatcher of its novelty, it didn't diminish the excitement for me. Using the D-pad to aim isn't as cumbersome as most shooters. The screen takes on a 3x3 grid, making it that much easier for you to make your mark. I am sad to say I don't own a justifier, so I can't comment on its accuracy. Still, I'd love to give it a whirl.
Investigation is where the core gameplay truly lies. While engaging, the interface is kind of clunky. I feel the major issue here is that it doesn't reward gamers for employing inductive reasoning. There are several clues throughout that are readily apparent to avid mystery solvers, but the game forces you to look first, investigate second, then whatever. The game is in lockstep with the character, not the gamer. This can be especially irritating when Gillian has his aha moment while I sit for five fucking minutes watching him bask in his own glory. The graphics are some of the best I've seen on Sega CD. Its use of color is fantastic, and there are plenty of flourishes that make these typically static images pop. Know all about us, do you, Junker? That... that wound! Jean did that to her. Die, Junker! Sound design is definitely tops, from the snatchers, gears, and servos, to gunfire right on down to an eerie drip of a leaky pipe. The music is a mixed bag. Not that any of it is bad, though there are times where I feel the score is somewhat out of place. One moment, I'm playing an edgy techno thriller. You know that Queen's Hospital? I found out that they undertook a major expansion project in 2035 to put in a basement. The next, I'm listening to a Dirty Harry soundtrack. I don't know how to say this right, but... But I've always had a special feeling about you. Now that all is said and done, is Snatcher worth its high asking price? Honestly, I'll say yes. As I said, there weren't that many copies produced, and it's the only version, aside from Europe and Australia, that's been translated into English. On top of that, it happens to be a damn good game.